Hello my fellow Jetty users, welcome back to my workshop for another of Harry's little Jetty Clinic videos. And in this one we are going to look at the Servo Balancer. Now I did a video about the Servo Balancer very early on in the series, uh, when I was still doing them in portrait rather than landscape mode, and with a, a 16 with the, the black and white screen. And the opportunity has arisen whilst I'm uh, reprogramming a model to need to use the balancer and thus chance to make a video with the better uh, landscape format, colour, and show you an actual practice rather than just a, a sort of theory with a model, a um, little cardboard plane on the bench. And so we'll see just how you can use the balancer very quickly and accurately and how its special little features work. Okay, the model in question, as you can see, is a Lightning. It is the English Electric Lightning. This beauty here, built from the Mick Reeves kit, powered by a Wren 160 engine. The model's covered in flight metal, which is a heck of a job, but uh, produces an incredible finish. It's proper aluminium. And to give you an idea of its size, there's my hand on a, a tailplane. And what we're going to do today is get the tailplane travels to match right throughout the travel range, not just at the end points. Now, they, they have a particular problem. And you see, the um, the pivot point for the all-moving tailplane isn't side to side across the aircraft. It's there, and it comes out at this angle. So the tailplane does not pivot like that. It pivots like that. And the servos driving the tailplane are on the opposite side. So this is the left tailplane, its servo is over on the right hand side, and the servo for the right tailplane is on the left side, which means their push rods cross over one another, meaning that one of the servos has to be blocked up in the mount to raise it up high enough for its push rod to cross over. And that means the push rods are arriving at all sorts of funny angles on the pivot arms. And that gives rise to quite uh, unequal travels. I'm using proper, good quality servos here. They are JR 8511s. Um, I thoroughly disapprove of cheaper servos which have uh, inconsistent and inaccurate travels, but people like them because they're cheap. However, I prefer to do things this way. Anyway, uh, despite that, I say because of the linkages, we have a problem getting them to match. Okay. Now, in many of my videos, I've said that rather than use servo setup to get your endpoints to match, I prefer to use another menu first, say elevators or butterfly flaps menu, um, th these sorts of things, uh, aileron differentials. But in this case, I've just gone straight to the servo setup. Why? Well, the things like the flaps and the retracts, because they, they are twist and turns, they, they, the retracts sweep back with the wing, with heavy wheels on the end of long legs, produce big elevator trim changes. And I need the servos to react very equally to the flight mode trims and mixer trims. And if you use menus like the elevator menu, um, you haven't matched the servos, you've matched the elevator input into them. So I need the servos to react equally to th other inputs. So I went straight to... Inactivity alarm. Uh, thank you, dear. Straight to the servo setup to set up the travels of my elevator servos. So you can see elevator one, which is on the left side, with these travels and a tiny bit of sub trim I just had to put in because too much messing about deep inside the aircraft trying to adjust the... Uh, uh, linkages and then elevator two on the right hand side no sub trim and matching travels there to get the two sides to at least match so they're matched at the center they're matched at full up and full down and how did i do that well i use the zikoi balance and weight meter with the optional angle meters so that's what these are held onto the, the rear of the tailplane. Okay, now, um, other meters are available. Uh, 
Digitech in the Netherlands does a, a balance and weight meter and angle things, does a very similar job. If you're wondering why I've got Zikoi, it's simply because that was the first one out quite a long time before the Digitech one, and I bought it literally the, you know, the week they went on sale. Uh, so we're having a look at the cerebral balancer. Now, my way of doing things is I treat the servo on the left side of the aircraft as the reference, whether it's aileron, flap, tailplane, whatever. And I then make all my adjustments to the uh, servo on the right-hand side to get it to match. So that whenever I come back in the future to have to make any adjustments or tweaks, I know it's the one on the right-hand side that's got any funny numbers or balancer in it. And the one on the left is the sort of pure reference one. So that's why I'm going to use Elevator 2 and I'm going to use its balancer to make it match whatever the left-hand tailplane is doing. Okay, here we are, servo balancer. Press the programming dial and we go into it. Now what we can see is that uh, a new menu has appeared with the word auto and a servo lock. We have got, if I move it, I'll just switch that off for a second. If I move the stick, can you see the gun sight traveling? I'll zoom in. Let me see a bit better. There we go. There, see the gun sight traveling? Uh, so that's showing me where the stick is as I move it. These little dots are the multiple points that we can move up or down to balance the travels. Um, so as you can see, center, 50%, 100%. So I pull the stick. It's near 100% travel, because they've got the travels, what, about 97% or something, 95, 85%, whatever, doesn't matter. The big circle, which is blue in this colour scheme, would be black on a black and white screen or a different colour for a different colour scheme, denotes which point it's at is the one going to be moved as we rotate the dial. So at the moment it's at the centre point, so if I rotate the dial, it takes that point up and down. Let's put it back to the middle. <clears throat> <coughs> Pardon me. Now, what does auto do? I'll switch it back on. The system defaults to auto being switched on. What does that mean? Well, now watch what happens when I move the stick. The point telling which point is going to be programmed jumps with the stick to the point nearest to the stick. And I apologise if you can hear put puttering in the background. Neighbours just decided to mow his lawn. So I'll move the stick. You can see the gun. And there, the point jumps. So it jumps with you to wherever the nearest point is to the stick position. And then you can adjust that point up or down. If I switch auto off, it doesn't go with it. How do we move the programming point? Well, if I press the programming dial, it will jump one to the right. Yeah. And if I press escape, it will go to the left. So I can pick my point manually that I want to adjust. There is one other difference. I'll switch auto back on. I'll come down to that point to the left there and I'll move it downwards. Now you see how it's taking a whole curve with it. So not just that point, but it's pulled other points with it to try and smooth it all out. <clears throat> This is a bit of a nuisance for me, because if I wanted this point to be adjusted, it's taken the centre point with it. So now our servos are no longer matched at the centre. Mm. Oh. I'll have to uh, come back to that point there. Bring that back to zero. And bring the centre point back to zero as well. And I've made a complete mess of it because I moved the center point in the first place. Now we'll move along here, we'll get that one back up to the middle. Oh, it's just messed the whole thing up. Let's clear it out. Alright, uh, we'll probably have to. Move along here, clear, clear, no, not going to do it. Yeah, that was at a long press of clear, cleared it all out. <clears throat> okay, um, 
But if we switch the auto off, and I come press the escape button, I can now move to that point there. Now watch what happens when I scroll downwards. It takes just that point. So it's not messing up with the points either side of it. This is much neater from our point of view. So we'll put it back to there. <clears throat> and I'll come back to the centre point. OK. Now what I need to do then is choose a point to program. But I'd like the stick to hold it there whilst I look at my angle meter. OK. What can we do? Well, that's where the servo lock comes in. Although it says servo lock, it doesn't actually lock just this servo. Remember, we're, we're in elevator two at the moment. It locks the elevator function for us. So it's going to move not just elevator two, but all the elevator servos. So watch what happens. I'll pull the elevator back. See the gun sights move to the first point there. And I'm going to press this button, servo lock fire. There we go. Now I'm going to release the stick back to neutral, but you can see it hasn't moved. It's got 26% up elevator. I missed the 25% point very slightly. Lovely. And now what I can do is press the programming dial to move the point that will be programmed to that one. And if I have a look at my angle meters, I can see, aha, uh -huh, the right has travelled a bit more than I want. So what I'm going to do is spin the programming dial to move that point downwards in the graph until I get the two to match. What do you reckon? A little bit of jitter in the system, but we can live with that. We can see it. That'll do. So come back here and have a look. And there is our programmed point. Lovely. Let's move the stick a little just to get the elevator there, take the lock off, move along to the next point, get it there, press the lock button. I can now release the stick and it holds half up elevator for us. So I need to move the point that will be programmed, as denoted by the big blue circle, along to this one. And I'll be able to program that. Let's take a look. Look at my angles. Oh, again. They're not matching, so I need to move that right one down a little bit. Nearly there. Yep, that will do. They're matched. Come back here. There's the result. Okay. All right, let's take the lock off. Move my stick to three quarters. Press the lock button, move my programming point along by pressing the programming dial. There we go, ready to move it and have a look. Oh, once again, they're still not matched, so I can spin the dial till I'm happy the numbers are matching. I'll go with that. There we are. Have a look. Lovely. There you can see the curve building. So now I shall uh, take the lock off. Move to full travel. Lock it. And there we can see our numbers are pretty much matching. Where we'd already set the previous um, max travels in servo setup. Okay. I'll take the lock off. Move the stick back to there. Right, let's go to down elevator. Move to there. Lock on. Now I'll press the escape button. We'll move the point to be programmed back to there. Let's have a look. A little bit of a mismatch. Let's try spinning the dial that way, see what happens. Yep, that's the correct way. What do you reckon? One more. Yeah, I'll go with that. There we are, there's the effect on the curve. Let's push down elevator again, switch the lock off, come to the next point, switch the lock on, move our programming point with the escape button, goes to the left, there we are. Let's have a look at our travels. 
Oh, yeah, we need to adjust the right one again. Let's come down here. Bit more, bit more. Yep, that'll do. Look at that. Okay, doke. Push in the down, switch off the lock. Come to there, fire. There's the lock. Oh, look at that. Bang on 75%. wonder how many of you remember Bernie the Bolt from, was it the Golden Shot? Oh, man. <laughs> Gives away my age, doesn't it? <laughs> 1970s game show program on British TV. Left a bit, right a bit, down a bit, fire. Let's have a look. Uh, then, oh, just before I do adjust it, remember, I've got to move the point to be programmed over to that one. So press escape. There we go. Uh, just a small adjustment to be made to get the two numbers to match. I'll go with that one. There we are. And that's it. I can take the lock off, move to full down. I know they match because they, it's, that's the end points. You can see there. Lovely. And there. That's it. Look at the curve we've built up. Nice and easily by using auto switched off so that each point moves without moving the point next to it. Using the lock, although it's a, it appears to be servo lock, it's a function lock which is great for then getting the two to match. And yes, I've been using a fancy electronic meter, but uh, you can have good old fashioned, um, you know, these curved meters that you put behind the trailing edge and sort of read off the number as it moves up and down the, the um, ruler scale, or even just eyeballing it. It's surprising how accurately you can get surfaces to match just by watching when the top or the bottom of one surface disappears compared to the next. However you move it doesn't matter. Uh, this is how you use servo balancer and a lovely device it is.